And now, presented by the BFA Mercury, it is the Playbook Update. Hello everybody, today is going to be a very football heavy episode. We are first going to start with college football. We all know that Georgia took Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl, and in the All-State Sugar Bowl, Alabama took down Clemson. And the championship game was nothing short of a great game with Alabama coming back from 20-3 to to eventually win the game 27-23. to and that's all fine and good, but let's remember that Ohio State should probably be in that position right now. Or perhaps even undefeated UFC. And now we are here for the absolute cream of the crop. We are here to recap NFL postseason week one, the wild card round. The first game was the Tennessee Titans and Kansas City Chiefs. And that was also nothing short of a great game. With the Chiefs looking really good early, getting up to a 21-3 lead on the Titans before the Titans came storming back. And Mariota looked very good as he broke down the Chiefs' defense one by one. The Titans went on to win that game by a score of 22-21. As the game came down to the final play, the later matchup of the day was, of course... The Atlanta Falcons and the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams were the number three seed, while the Falcons were the number six seed. And we all know what happened to the Falcons last time they were in a playoff game. Yes, I am talking about when the Patriots decided to shove a chicken leg down their throat. But the Falcons were surprisingly amazing in the first half, getting out to a 13 to nothing lead against the Rams. And the Rams really never got it going, as Jared Goff was not as good as he was for most of the season. However, this was only his first playoff-type season he had. And the Rams' strength of schedule didn't make this any easier for L.A. As the Falcons went up 13 nothing and never looked back, winning the game by a score of 26-13. to on to Sunday's game, Jacksonville and Buffalo. What a defensive battle we have here. Buffalo didn't even make it into the end zone. Jacksonville won that game 10-3. to And yeah, if you haven't already heard Jacksonville crowning themselves as hashtag Saxonville, hashtag Saxonville they were, picking apart Buffalo's O-line one by one. The second game of the night was quite a shootout between the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. And the Saints ended up winning this game 31-26. to and even though it was a shootout, Carolina never was able to get a lead in this game. As Drew Brees looked like he was in his prime, and Cam Newton looked like the guy that backed away from the ball in the Super Bowl against the Broncos. Oh, wait a minute. That was Cam Newton. Well then, that just proves my point. I am now joined here by NFL analyst Miles Rolfe, who also has his own YouTube station. How are you doing today, Miles? Pretty good. How are you, Allie? I'm doing pretty good. So we're here for some predictions for the divisional round. We're going to start off in the AFC. We're going to start off with the number three Jaguars against the number two Steelers. I'm liking the Steelers in this one. Jags defense has been hot, but that Steelers offense is really open these days. Last time they were in the playoffs last year, they did not have their number two and three wide receivers in um, Martavius Bryant and Juju Smith-Schuster. I really like these guys. They bring a lot of um, speed and height to that left side for Roethlisberger, and it's a good compliment for Brown. It gives Brown a lot of opportunities to be open. I like Bell, too. Bell will be a great piece to this offense winning in this game up the middle because that the Jags quarterbacks can be shut down in corners at times, but I think Bell will be good for that short game and possibly break one on the Jags side. I think they might struggle to get things going. I think the Steelers, they have a good front seven this year. Although Shazier is out, I still like them. Strength pressure to Bortles. I think Bortles will be quite flustered and look similar to how he did last weekend. Score prediction, I'll go 27-13 Steelers. Hmm, very interesting indeed. Now let's check out the other AFC matchup with the Tennessee Titans, who are the number five seed against the number one seed, your New England Patriots. Let's start on the Titans offense. I think their offense is looking really good this year. They call it a exotic smash mouth offense, whatever that means. But great run game with the double-headed monster, whatever you want to call it, Murray and Henry. Although Henry has been taking that feature back role these days. And um, the receivers are quite good with um, Matthews and Davis, although Davis is struggling to get going here off the injury. 
in his rookie. Um, but I, I like the ceiling cornerbacks to shut down the receiving game. I think Walker will be a, a big piece, though, for Mariota. He'll be a guy looked, for him to look to. And I think their run game will be their biggest friend in this one. Henry, I think, will have a decent game up the middle against New England. But as I said, I don't think they can get much going in the pass. On the New England offense side, I like them to um, pass the ball. These, corner, these corners in, um, for Tennessee, they look great on paper. The rookie White and Logan Ryan coming in, come over from New England. But they have not been performing as you would think they would. So I like to pass. They have Cooks. I think he's not good scoring. He, um, not that he's bad, but he has a, he's underperforming to what he thought he might look like this year. Also, Gronk and possibly Hogan, although Hogan has been banged up. But I like the pass game, and I think they'll they look to their backs to be more receiving backs than running backs. And whenever they do that, they seem to get into a groove. So I like New England in this one, and I think it'll be a pretty high scoring game. I'll go 34 17, Patriots. Ooh, doubling up on him. So it looks like. Miles Rolfe has the Steelers and the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. Now we head over to the NFC, and we're going to start with the number one Philadelphia Eagles against the number six Atlanta Falcons. All right, let's start on the Falcons offense side, and they are explosive. Julio, who we finally got going, I think he caught eight of nine possibly last weekend, and Samuel on the other side, and then two great backs, and Coleman and Freeman. Now, they've been here before, just last year, so I like the experience with them. I think they'll pick apart the Eagles in both ways with the run and the pass, although the Eagles corners have been looking pretty stout lately, but I think they're no match for Julio and some of these bigger receivers bringing experience and height to the game, but I think there'll be a little bit of pressure coming in from the Eagles. They have a great front four featuring Fletcher Cox, so I think Ryan could be pressured quite a bit in this game, but luckily for him, these backs, Freeman and Coleman, are quite good in the receiving game as well, so I think they can be quite successful to this fight a decent defense for the Eagles. On the Eagles side, I'm pretty sure Wentz is still out. I think that was a season-ending injury. So I think next man up is Foles. Now, he hasn't looked bad, but I don't trust him to win a playoff game. I think the stage might be a little bit too big for him. I think they'd come out to a slow start. Pretty decent receivers in Aguilar and bringing Jeffrey over from the Bears. But the Falcons defense is quite good. As I said, they have been here before. They have two front with the Big contract he got this over the offseason and Alford, Robert Alford on the other side, picking off Brady in the Super Bowl. I've heard him reference as that, that guy before, and they have great safeties. I think they'll bring pressure, walk down to um, target in the middle, and run at this offense quite well. My score prediction is 31 to 10, Falcons. All right, now we have the final matchup of the divisional round. We have the number four New Orleans Saints against the Minnesota Vikings, who are number two. All right, in this one, let's start with the Vikings. They have two backs that they look to on occasion, Murray and McKinnon, and some great receivers in Diggs, and they have a guy on the other side who's been quite good lately. I am blanking on his name but at the moment. I'm sorry about that, but he's been really good. Towards the second half of the regular season, he was averaging, I believe, just over 100 yards and a touchdown a game, which is quite good. So I think Keenum will look to him a lot, and we can see Dig possibly open for those deep balls. The run game, I think, will be limited early, but they could break a big one once they get in the group. On the same side, they have a great running game, one of the top in the NFL with the rookie Kamara and Ingram, who really turned his season around once Peterson left. They have great receivers in Thomas, Skin and Coleman, and I think Reese looking great in this game, being an experienced guy, hungry for a Super Bowl spot, considering he's late in his career, and certainly doesn't have a lot of Super Bowls. Right now, I'm certain of Super Bowl ring status. But in this game, we're looking at two great defenses and two high-potential offenses. I like the... 23 points and the Vikings with 21. That'll be probably the most interesting matchup of the I week. I think it will too. Well, Miles, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Ellie, for the invitation of joining the show today. You're very welcome, and and I would like to know if you would be willing to be back next week when we check out the championship games. Sounds great. Excellent. And with that, this has been the Playbook Update. Now back to Alec Wolf and the Mixdown.